Hey everybody, this is Nelson Everhart. Admit it, you thought I was dead. Uh, but no, I'm back, and we're back for another musical tour of the Spiral. It's been a while, so let's go back to Pirate 101. This track is the Valencia Combat track. I went back to look at when this was, when I was talking to King's Isle about writing this, and it, it said it was 2016. That seems impossibly recently. It doesn't seem that long ago, but this was a continuation of the first Valencia story uh, arc, and so we this is kind of the second combat tune from there. I didn't have a, a lot of kind of direct direction from King's Isle about it because I, you know, we had kind of established the storyline and the characters and the themes. So this is sort of a continuation of that. I don't really know if like the Armada and the killer robots were ever originally envisioned by the writers like this, but I always thought of them as the cricket robots from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy cold merciless killing machines and from a more civilized age so we knew that the music needed to have a lot of classical vibes i mean the classical era of uh classical music some people use the term classical music just to sort of apply to all kind of orchestral music but there are different eras of orchestral music baroque classical romantic and i'm i'm not used to being asked to write sort of historically accurate music so this this is sort of uh, classical music filtered through my perspective. I kind of consider myself a keyboard player rather than a piano player because the piano is an instrument unto itself and I kind of use the keyboard as a way to perform different instruments. So the specifics of performing on a piano aren't really my specialty. So it was a neat challenge to try and do that. I, I definitely wanted to give it a very picture a piano player with their head down at the piano, really pounding on the keys. That's kind of uh, the, the image that I was using. So with that established, let's uh, go through it, take a listen, and then we'll break it down. So there are a couple new uh, instruments in here, mostly f just kind of for the mix. This was a tricky one. I don't normally do stuff, as I said, with piano. So trying to save some frequency room for the piano in there, I dialed back a couple things that I normally would have a little bit louder, uh, like the brass, and let the piano kind of fill in a little bit there. So the you might notice that the brass um, and percussion is a little bit thinner than I normally mix them just to provide some room for the piano there. And in listening back to it, I noticed that 
the harp was I was using one of the older Quantum Leap Symphonic or- Orchestra sounds, and I wanted to update it that a little bit. It's it's in the background, so it's it's mostly just to get some of the the hall sound in there. Here's the old harp. I wanted a little more kind of ambience. So that's my new Orange Tree Samples Angelic Harp. And I was a little bit torn. I was using some of my older woodwind sounds. I have better ones, I think, in the library. But when I do these remixes, I I don't want to let anybody down that's a fan of the music and just wants to hear a cleaner mix of that. And, you know, somebody wants to hear, like, new stuff that I bring to it. So I'm, I'm always trying to walk that line. So some of my woodwind stuff sounds a little older, but... Still not bad. This is uh, Project Sam's Symphobia. And if you notice, I have a woodwind sustain and a woodwind staccato sound. I originally did this track back when those were different patches from uh, Symphobia. Now they're the same patch, just woodwind ensemble, and they let you do key switching to change from staccato to uh, sustain and all of these other families. But they were already on two tracks, so what I did was I just had two instances of that one patch and then one of them became the sustain one of them became the staccato that leads to some interesting parts in here where the staccato patch is doing this part and then the sustain part is providing the sustain notes obviously together we get this So I could do this with key switches where I could, you know, switch to the staccato part and play the dut, dut, and then switch to the sustain part and do the long held chord. Duh. But this way you actually get, because the staccato uh, part plays on the downbeat of that chord, you get a stronger attack. So you really get a dun, da da instead of a dut, da hua, you know, kind of a little bit of a mushier attack that you sometimes get in sustain patches. It gives it more of a uh, sforzando maybe approach. There's probably a way to have done it with key switches, but since I had already done it like this, I just kept it. And then helping out the woodwind patches is my Cinesamples Bassoon from Cinewinds. Just helping out some of the low end. It's got a nice uh, woofy character. All right, so right at the top, this is sort of the overall spiccato patch from Cinesamples. Sometimes it's nice just to have sort of a mass, you know, spiccato sound with all of the strings from bass to violin all included in. For that, I like using the Symphobia patches. But then to get more particular, uh, I have some other libraries. This one is the LA Scoring Strings. So that patch is providing a little bit of detail in the, the higher end, accentuating this part. A little more rosin on the bow. Both of them together. Just gives a little more direction there. And then holding down the bottom end, we got a cello patch. This particular cello patch, also from Ellie's Scoring Strings from Audio Bros. Audio Bro, sorry. This patch, actually, when you hold down the sustain pedal, it plays this pattern of 16th notes. So instead of playing the da 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 you know, pressing the keyboard down, you just hold down the sustain pedal, press the, you know, and hold the key down and then it'll play that rhythm. That's not normally the way that I program stuff. I like to do it as kind of as you would really perform it as possible. But here their programming sounded really good. I don't wanna try using that feature. Yeah, staying on that note for a long time. Um, this part's really interesting because the chords are changing every two bars. And then try and change. So this is kind of an ostinato part that that doesn't change uh, until a little bit later by delaying when that note kind of resolved a little bit and started moving with the other uh, strings. It just sort of added our tension right off the top here. So this is where it should change. But it's down on that note. And then, right then, it starts descending. To me, the 
the sound of drama in classical music is this really bombastic um, battle between the different sections of the orchestra. So here we have the woodwinds and the brass bouncing back and forth uh, against each other. Like the woodwinds are, you know, I am playing and the brass, bop. Bah, bah, I am playing, you know, so we get this little back and forth kind of progression through the chords. Not 100% on dropping the woodwinds out there. I think they probably would join in with the brass for that phrase, but I think I wanted the focus to be a little bit more on the the string progression through there because it goes and does some different stuff in there and in the same way i have the kind of massed brass sound which is just all of the uh, brass instruments together and they're so mushy and that doesn't sound right by itself so i take a center brass uh trombone patch so get that depth Da, da. and obviously a lot of this piece is that kind of you know battle somebody says something somebody echoes definitely did use a little bit less uh, percussion than i normally do percussion is not a huge feature of most uh, classical era tunes just have uh, a snare with the snare off and then a timpani i put some new Timps in there and just some crash and some roll symbols in there with the snare on it sounds very military-ish army march kind of idea with the snare off i felt it gave a little bit more of a again a cultured sort of historical you know old school drum and fife group sound because the snare drums of you know yesteryear aren't nearly as you know cranked down as as they are today especially like in marching band if you if you go see like a high school marching band those snares are just like really tight and this being the snares are very loose the drum is loose it's probably deeper you know it doesn't sound quite as uh, militant you know it's it's still kind of a brutal sound and, and a driving sound so here's the old temps I really like the way those temps sound. This is from the East West Symphonic Orchestra Silver uh, Library that I had back in the day. It's one of the first libraries I bought to be able to simulate orchestral music. And it, I believe it was probably for this game. You know, I had gotten the contract to write for this game. And it's like, man, I need a bunch of uh, sounds really quickly. So here is Cine Samples. Just gives way more detail in there. really like the hearing the skin in there and hearing a lot of the resonance uh, but this temp has a lot of sort of the body and the sort of the mid-range tones that you know I've sort of learned to structure a lot of my mixes around So between the two of them, you get a good definition and, and the body. And then the piano starts uh, adding its stuff. I'll tell you something, low piano really speaks so nicely and gives a nice punch. I mean... That with the timpanis, just really just a nice punch in there. And then the bassoons, it doesn't have to be fully in your face. They're not playing, you know, super loud either. It's just, it's nice and distinct. It's nice and accurate. Really give you a lot of bang for your buck there. The piano has so many frequencies in it and it, the way that it produces those frequencies by you know taking a little felt hammer and banging a string under tension and when i don't write with a lot i, I sort of forget like how easy it is to um, say a lot with one instrument you know? it's 
So onto this next piece, uh, the chords are up here. If you're following along at home, don't trust that you're gonna remember what this was all about later on. You know, I listen to the Wizard One soundtrack on YouTube every once in a while, and sometimes I'm like, was this me? Did I write this? You just move so far away from that work. That work was sort of a moment in your creative development. I'll do this a lot when I have an instrument kind of, you know, doing busy on its own. I'll have the harp doing the arpeggio, just kind of glisses up and down the uh, chord we're working with. <laughs> I, I like writing these kind of harp parts. I started using the instrument more mostly with Wizard 101. And I usually perform these live, I, and I don't quantize these at all because it sounds, it doesn't sound right. It sounds really, it, it can sound really mechanical because it's a lot of stuff going on and if all of the notes sound perfect, then it doesn't, it doesn't really speak as a human voice. So here we have the woodwinds and the brass working together. Uh, with the da 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 da, and then the strings are doing the answer to that. And then, as far as harmony goes, I always find diminished chords a good sort of shortcut into the kind of classical world using the diminished chords as a dominant to lead into the next sections. So then we come back to the kind of main theme the with the with the 16th notes uh in the cellos just providing the propulsion for that. We're stating it it's in a different key, we're stating it with a different group of instruments. This is more kind of development of the main theme. <laughs> All right, so it might have sounded like we jumped ahead a little bit in the pattern because we kind of did. So we're mostly in six, eight throughout this piece. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then every once in a while, you notice that it goes to five, eight, um, and then back into six, eight. So we just drop a beat, go into the next section. As soon as you kind of get used to a different time signature, I find it's you know fun sometimes to drop a beat here and there just to put the listener off balance. But it's always about, you know, you set up an expectation and then as soon as somebody gets used to that, then, you know, you mix it up a little bit and throw them off balance. <laughs> there it's the feel is really three and two as opposed to three and three one two three one two three one two three one two one two three so this next section like moves into a kind of a different pulse for it it's more of a it's instead of like dot 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 it moves into the dot 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 so there's no accent on the first and fourth beat of the sixth pattern <laughs> Uh, for some reason, a lot of my favorite songs have been in strange time signatures, but 7-8 is a particularly fun one, where we go into 7, and instead of this 6-8, you know, this very regular 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, we're now in uh, this feel. <laughs> It's really breaking the pattern down instead of now we're five six seven one you know it's just messing with the feel that we've kind of established throwing a kind of weird pattern in there lets the brain kind of reset uh, one of the things i added for this remix was we i had the spark going on Like this line, the seven eights working really well. Added in some of the other instruments to highlight different parts of this line. So I put the bassoon in first, playing the just the low parts. And then I put the staccato woodwinds on every other line up an octave. Mm -hmm. 
and then accentuated every second one of those with the uh, up, up an octave with the violins. So this is, I mean, it's all the same notes. It's a bunch of different instruments doing the same notes, uh, some of them in different octaves, but it really gives a feel of developing this idea. It's not just a static linear line. It's really, you get these little parts peeking in, sticking their heads up for a second and then going away. Right back into the opening again. <laughs> Obviously, I write for loops most of the time, but I do like uh, a piece that ends with finality. All right, everybody, so an oldie, but not so much as oldie as I felt like it was. Thanks, as always, for your patience. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.